there's some places that people don't use words like left and right at all. And instead, everything happens in north, south, east, west, or some kind of cardinal direction space. I mean, so a, a fixed orientation relative to the earth as opposed to relative to the orientation right. of the human body. Yes. And so in languages... I wouldn't do well in that <laughs> civilization. Well, you would learn. I guess. Would... Probably. <laughs> um, in fact, kids in these cultures go through uh, really uh, awesome training where their parents will say, oh, do you know where grandmother's house is? And the kid might say, yes, it's over there. And the parent will say, no, no, it's over there. And you get this kind of micro-correction so that you can, you can right, get quite right. precise because that's what's expected of you. In fact, in some languages like this, even your body parts would be described using cardinal direction. So you might say, oh, there's a little speck on your uh, southwest shoe. And so if you... Uh, Are you serious? Yes. And then if you swivel like in this chair like you're not supposed to, uh, then, uh, of course, it would no longer be your southwest shoe. It would change. So imagine doing the hokey pokey in a language like that. There have to be a lot of mental gymnastics. <laughs> and so um, for folks who think of themselves in space that way, instead of thinking in terms of left and right, instead uh, thinking in terms of cardinal directions all the time, uh, what we found is they organized time also in cardinal directions. So for example, one group that I studied, the Kuk Tyer, this is an Aboriginal group in Australia, instead of making time go left to right or right to left, they make it go from east to west. So if you sit someone facing south, they'll organize things from left to right. And yeah. obviously this is related to the rise and setting of sun, or, or that must be the argument. Uh, yeah, the, yeah this, the sun is a really good organizing principle. But it's not the only one that people use. So other places, you might live on a hill, and so then time might go uphill. Other places... I mean, there are yes. cultures in which... Yes, yeah. there, uh, there's a culture in Mexico that's all tall, uh, where time goes uphill. I see. There's a culture in Papua New Guinea where time goes down river. Uh, and there's one uh, that we know of in Papua New Guinea, this is work by Rafael Nunez, where time, this is the Yupno, time flows into the village at one angle, and then it takes a turn and flows out of the village at another angle. And this has to do with the location of the source and the mouth of the Yupno River. So these are important locations for them, and so time there follows the exact topography of the region, rather than going in a straight line or following some kind of other fundamental... Uh, and, and how does that manifest? I mean, like in everyday conversation, <laughs> if you're like referring to the past, you're like going, you know, and if you, I mean, are you actually making use of these oblique angles in, 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 the, in, in your articulation of In fact, that's, exact, that's exactly how he measured it. He asked people to tell stories about things that happened in the past or things that they're planning to do in the future. And he could measure the spontaneous gestures that people made as they were talking about their plans. Though very often, if you speak a language that has absolute directions like this, you're unlikely to gesture uh, for things that are not space, because your spatial gestures actually mean those things. So when I gesture in English, if I say, oh, I used to live in San Francisco, or I'm going to my grandmother's house, these gestures don't go anywhere. Sure. Like, you can't, you can't follow these gestures and get to any location, right? Whereas in these cultures, you can follow those gestures. In fact, I had one conversation with uh, a fellow in Pomparao, where I asked him what he was doing the next day, and he said, oh, I'm going fishing. And as soon as he said that, he realized he'd just given away the location of a secret fishing spot. And so then he started saying, you know, fishing. Uh, he had to kind of blur, blur the location a little bit. So, so in, in these cultures, when one goes indoors, mm -hmm. you're, you're keeping track of your bodily orientation relative to the, the grid, the east, west, north, south grid? Yes. So in these particular communities, people keep track of it when they're indoors, also when they're un, in unfamiliar locations. Um, it's just a matter of keeping a, a map. It's a, usually a top-down kind of bird's-eye view map and keeping it rotating in your mind. And this, I actually had this experience. I was um, there for a little while and um, I was tr really trying to stay oriented because people treat you like you're a little bit stupid if you're, if you're not oriented, rightfully so. Yeah, right, right. Um, and then one day I was walking along. It was a hot day and I was frustrated about something. And I just noticed this window pop up in my mind that was the landscape seen from above, and I was a little red dot traversing this landscape. And then as I turned, the thing rotated in my mind's eye so that it would stay fixed on the landscape. And as soon as I saw that, and it just happened automatically, as soon as I saw that, I thought, oh, 
that makes it trivial now. I have this extra little widget in my mind that uh, I can just read it's off just sort of. It's a mental compass that, that's, that's yeah. there with you. And I then confessed this to someone kind of shyly there. I said, you know, this weird thing happened. I saw this, and they just kind of said, well, of course, how else would you do it? Uh, <laughs>